But listen, uh, I, always, I always tell people when I'm talking about politics and how important it is to vote that we all have a sphere of influence. We all have people that listen to us. They, they know we follow politics. Everybody in this room is politically active. They'll listen to you. So you have 10 or 15 people that, that really value your opinion. You've got to reach out to every single one of those people and tell them how important it is to vote. So I just told you that you can go vote right now, right? So over the next couple days, everybody you talk to, you got to remind them. You can vote early in person now. For the next 10 days, everybody in the state of Michigan can vote early in person. So that's why we're here, a get out the vote rally. You know, you, you think it doesn't really matter, a few people here or there, that's not true. You know 10 or 15 people, they know 10 or 15 people. All of a sudden you talk to your 15 people, your sphere of influence, you've affected 1,500 people's opinions because the word gets out. So just do it, all right? Auto workers, all right? Okay. Now, now I wanted to tell you, my auto career started in 1978. I hired in in September of 78, the same month as a guy named Lee Iacocca. Anybody remember him? Okay, he had to save the auto industry. I hired in. About a year later, I got laid off indefinitely. The auto industry is not, you know, guaranteed to last forever. So I, uh, I got back to work. Eventually, I got recalled. I worked 11 years for Chrysler Corporation. And I took a buyout because Iacocca, to save that country, was downsizing it, eliminating uh, different jobs, shutting some plants down, farming out some work. So I took a buyout, went to school, got my associate's degree. I call it my 10-year degree because it took 10 years for me to get it. And um, did a couple other things. Then I hired in at Ford Motor Company. I ended up working there for 25 years. Well, well while I was there, guess what? Chrysler did go bankrupt. GM went bankrupt. Ford took a $20 billion loan to stay in business. So now we're looking at the third time in my lifetime that the auto industry is on thin ice. Now you think, well, gee, how can they be on thin ice? They just got a great contract. Yeah, they got a great pay and benefits contract. Labor costs went way up. But you know what? You know what Sean Fain did not get for the people he's supposed to represent? Job security. You never heard him talk about it the whole time they were on strike and in negotiations. So he got a short-term sugar high for the auto workers, but 10, 12 years down the road, they're going to be looking at plants moving out of, out of the country, going to Mexico, shifts being eliminated. He really put his workers in jeopardy. So, so that, that, uh, the media back there, they may think that the UAW supports Joe Biden. I got news for you. They don't. The people in this room, the auto workers in this room support Donald J. Trump. And they voted for him in 2016. They voted for him again in 2020. And they're going to vote for him again in 2024. So I want the auto workers in my home county of Macomb County and all across Metro Detroit to get your butts out and vote. Vote early. Tell your friends to vote early. And Donald Trump's going to win this election in November for the third time. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage veteran and city councilman Robert Donovic. Hello, Michigan. Who's ready for Donald J. Trump? Well, it's pretty exciting. I know it's a little cold, but as soon as Donald Trump, President Trump, walks in this room, it's going to get real hot in here. You know, it's so nice to be here with so many patriots tonight. Looking forward to seeing President Trump here in the state of Michigan. How great is it to have President Trump back in Michigan again? You know, I'm starting to think that President Trump is actually looking for property in Michigan because he wants to move and live in Michigan. 
It'd be pretty nice to have a Trump Tower right here at home, wouldn't it? Well, folks, people ask me, you're a millennial. Why do you support Donald Trump? Well, folks, my dad is an Albanian immigrant. And like thousands of Albanian immigrants have camp come to Michigan and across this country and everyone in this room tonight, my dad, when he came here, he wanted one thing. One thing, and that was an opportunity. An opportunity for freedom, an opportunity to work hard and provide a future for his family, an opportunity to come to this country and build something, an opportunity at the American dream. And I know, I know I'm old, I'm 32, I'm starting to get gray hair, but President Trump, President Donald Trump is the first president in my lifetime that understands the American dream. President Trump's the first president that really has fought for the American dream. He understands the American dream. He understands why so many of us get up every single day and work hard and provide a future for our families. And you know what? President Trump's going to work hard for us, and he's going to be the best president that we can elect this November to make him president again. President Trump understands that small businesses are the backbone of our economy. He understands that all the people in this room tonight and across our country are the backbone of this nation. And he's been fighting for us ever since 2016, and here he is fighting for us again today, and he's going to continue to fight for us when he's our 47th, 47th President of the United States of America. So everyone, it's time for us to get to work for President Trump like he's been working for us. We got to get out and vote early. Early voting has started in the state of Michigan and February 27th is primary day. It's time to tell sleepy Joe Biden to go back home and it's time for President Trump to get back in office and get to work for us because the American dream is good and it's alive and President Trump is going to fight for it. So now it's time for us to fight for him. Thank you, God bless you, and let's go Trump! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage U.S. Representative Jack Bergman. Sever Fly. You know, ladies and gentlemen, in the last probably 12 minutes, just before right now, I had a great chance to do what every proud American, I think, feels in their heart. Listen, listen to a prayer, listen to the pledge, and listen to our national anthem being sung. Let's give that young lady another round of applause. You know, the, uh, there's nothing that I think builds confidence in all of us individually and collectively because I heard you be part of that chorus because I could hear your voices in the background. That's what makes us, the United States of America, truly the great country that we are. Now, every day, you can read it, you can listen to it multiple times a day. This crisis, that crisis, everything's a crisis. Well. In my background as a Marine and as a commercial airline pilot, I know the difference between crisis and catastrophe. Let me give you an example. You got a crisis if I'm flying along and I lose an engine and I got to land at Detroit Airport and there's a 30 knot crosswind and there's ice on the runway. That's a crisis. It only becomes a catastrophe if I don't successfully land the airplane. So we know the difference between crisis and catastrophe. And why I say that now is because I want you to understand where we are and in a worst case scenario to keep Joe Biden in the basement of the White House. You know, that will become a catastrophe. It's already heading down that road. Right now, we have several self-induced crises going on right now. Crises of our own making, crises of a lack of leadership in this administration. The southern border crisis, 8.5 million illegal crossings during the last three and a half years. That's seven times the population of Oakland County, to give you an example. 
Inflammation, inflammation. Well, it sounds like a good, how about inflation? We won't make it inflammation today. Uh, but you know, it could be that because there's some warts growing on that. Um, families are still hurting, no matter how you cut it. Inflation has cut in, uh, into our ability to feed our families, to do the things we do. That's a crisis. Washington has a spending crisis. They can't stop spending money. Global crisis. Iran, China, Russia, other non-nation state actors, they don't respect the United States right now, and they're going to do what they continue to do because we on the global stage have become to be viewed as not the leader of the free world. That's not an option. Well, guess what? I've stated the issues. You know the issues. So what do we do? We elect Donald Trump. Because he proved in his first term that he could lead. He would hold others accountable, not only in our country, but across the world. He would, he would make people understand that they all had a role and a responsibility in making our country great again. And that's one of the key elements that why our country today and in the future needs a leader in the White House like Donald Trump. You're going to make the difference because, as I heard a couple other people just before me say, get out and vote. We need to get out and vote. And that doesn't mean waiting till Election Day. That's early voting. Use it. Bring 10, bring 15, bring the people from your church, bring the people, you know, from your, your coffee group, your card group, your, you know, your whatever it is you're, you're uh, involved with. We need every, every vote, and we need to vote now. Get it done, make the effort, and then help others come and help Donald Trump become the 47th president of the United States. God bless you all. God bless America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage U.S. Representative Lisa McLean. I play pretty big right now, don't I? Hey, well, thank you all for being here today. What do you think? How many people do you think we got here today? 2,000? 5,000? We still got a line outside? Hey, let me tell you something. No matter what the media says, we got a whole lot of people waiting in line in the freezing cold here to see the next president of the United States, and that's Donald J. Trump! That's what I'm talking about! But before I get rolling, and Lord knows I'm going to roll today, I can feel it. I want to say thank you to the volunteers who stood out there since 9 o'clock this morning. Thank you to all of you for standing out there in the freezing cold for one reason, and that's to take this country back. And one guy's going to do it! Listen, I know we're excited to see President Trump, and I am too. And I'm with you, because we have a primary in the next 10 days and he is going to win the primary. For those of you who don't know, I am Lisa McLean, and I represent Michigan's 9th con Congressional District, and I'll tell you, it is my honor to serve. I'm also proud to be an America First Republican, and I know, I know all of you are as well. Now, last time President Trump was here, he came to Michigan. Myself and the entire Michigan delegation endorsed him. 100%. And since then, President Trump has won the Iowa caucus, the New Hampshire and the Nevada primaries, 
and is seven days away from winning South Carolina from Haley Stevens. And might I add, that's her home state. And he's going to crush it. Now, these are major victories, not only for Donald Trump, but they are major victories for all of us. Because I can tell you firsthand, we are in the battle for the future of our free country. The freedoms we know and love are clearly under attack. And right now, as we stand here or sit here, right, Joe Biden and the Michigan Democratic Party are working overtime to keep Donald Trump off your ballot. He is. They want to take your rights away to freely choose who the next president of the United States is going to be. And they're trying to take your rights away on who you're going to vote for, which I find that very ironic from a party that loves choice, right? I'm the party of choice, yet I want to take all your choices away. Story got away from me. You got you to gotta bear with me. Now, not only do the Democrats want to take your right to vote away, they want to take your First Amendment a right away as well. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. Their party platform is a party of censorship. They don't want you to say that a biological woman is actually a biological woman. They don't want you to say that the border is Biden's fault. And they really don't want you to say that Joe Biden is unfit to be president. In fact, in fact, just a special counsel the other day said, President Biden's not fit to stand trial. Well, I'm going to ask this. If President Biden isn't fit to stand trial, how in God's name is he fit to be the commander in chief of this great nation? But let's look beyond Joe Biden's mental capacity for just one second. It's the very policies he has championed that are the ones that are ruining this country. Inflation is still at an all-time high, thanks to Bidenomics. The southern border is wide open because of his radical immigration policies. And wars are raging across this world because he has shown weakness rather than strength. But worst of all, Joe Biden has sold the soul of America. And he has sold the soul of America to the Chinese Communist Party. Let, let me be clear. China is not our friend. China is coming after us educationally, economically, and militarily. Look, look for one minute. Look at TikTok, which ironically the Biden campaign just joined. TikTok is a spyware company that the CCP uses to track and manipulate Americans. And their, their presidential campaign just subscribes to that. Republicans are against it. In fact, I've passed a bill to kneecap these policies for good. But Joe Biden and the Democrats can't get enough of China. And how convenient is that? Let's look at the Chinese energy policy for a moment. Under President Trump, we were energy independent. We didn't rely on anybody. Now, now America is energy dependent. Joe Biden has turned China, turned to China to fill our energy needs. Listen, America has massive, massive amounts of energy that we can produce and use for ourselves. But we constantly rely on Chinese energy to power our lives, especially our cars. And this one gets under my skin a little bit. To all of you UAW workers out there, thank you. But to all of you who are here today and who are listening at home, I have one question for you. And I want you to really ask yourself this. Do you really 
Do you really think Joe Biden cares about your jobs? I agree. I agree. Because the evidence would show he doesn't care about your jobs. He may, you're, you may be sleeping, he may pay lip service when you're up for a new contract, but with his energy policies, I'm going to share with you, if he continues on this green new energy policy, you will be out of a job. Biden wants to mandate, I love that word, mandate, from the party of choice, remember? Um, he wants to mandate that by 2030, 70% of all vehicles must be electric. That makes a lot of sense. Think about that. If you're an auto worker, it takes less parts to build an EV, which means less jobs. If Biden gets his way, you will be out of your, your job very, very soon. All of this is because Biden wants green energy. Agreed. Which means relying on our adversaries. It makes a lot of sense, right, to rely on China. Well, it makes a lot of sense if your last name's Biden and you have taken a ton of Chinese money. Sure makes sense, right? I'm with you. Brother Joe's got to go. And we're going to make him go. Let's fire Biden. Exactly. But let's not forget about Chinese manipulation right here in our state of Michigan. The Goshen Battery Facility near Big Rapids is a pawn that is controlled by the CCP. Its aim is to infiltrate our state, our economy, and our government. And they're doing it because Joe Biden and Michigan Democrats have opened their arms to communist Beijing. It's beyond sickening, and it will undermine our state for generations to come. Fire Gretchen Whitmer, might as well. I got to share with you, that warms my heart a little bit. Lock her up. I feel a lot of fire in this room right now. Listen, our great American exper experiment was born in brilliant minds filled with patriotism. And those patriots created our Declaration of Independence and Constitution. Today, everything we love about the American Republic is still embodied in those two. God bless it, brother. Can I get an amen? And protecting and upholding the Constitution is what we're fighting for. We are fighting to defend our constitutional rights, our constitutional rights. And we are fighting for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we are fighting for a man who loves and believes these ideas. This coming election is the most important election of our lifetime. I ask you this, do we want four more years of Sleepy Joe? Or would we rather have four more years of American glory with Donald J. Trump? Imagine when people actually love this country and put this country first. Hmm. Under Donald Trump, I miss a lot of things. I remember when gas was under two bucks a gallon. You guys remember that? I remember when it was safe to walk the streets in my community. I miss when we didn't have these wars around the world. That's my next line. And I remember 
when we didn't have to worry about men changing in girls' locker rooms. This election, we have a chance to take back our freedoms. Because I can tell you, when we elect Donald J. Trump, China will be under control. And when we elect Donald Trump, our economy will be better than ever. And when we elect our next president, Donald J. Trump, that southern border will be secured. It is time to take our country back and get it back on track. And it is time to make America great again. God bless you and God bless America. of no 
you never know. Yes, darling, I'm so hurt because I still love you so.
head up high and a door. Is a burning thing, and it makes a fiery ring. Bound by wild desire, I fell into a ring of fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, down, down. And the flames went higher, and it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire. I fell into a burning. Fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher, and it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire. The taste of love is sweet when hearts like ours meet. I fell for you like a child. But the fire went wild. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire.
Yeah, you can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the King Kong banging on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You can talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you go by yourself Standing in the Hall of Fame You can run the mile, you can walk straight through hell with a smile. You could be the hero, you could get the gold. Breaking all the records, if I never could be broke. Yeah, do it for your people, do it for your pride. You yeah. never gonna know if you never even try. Do it for your country, do it for your name. Cause there's gonna be a day when you're standing in the hall of fame. Yeah. And the world's gonna Yourself off the 
Trump. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. Thank you, Lee. And hello, Michigan. Hello. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. And I'm thrilled to be back in the American heartland. This is the heartland with the proud, hardworking patriots who made this country run and made the country great. Might not be so great right now, but we're going to have it great very quickly again. Not so great right now. Thanks to citizens like you. This November, the great state of Michigan is going to tell crooked Joe Biden, you're fired. Get the hell out of here. Get out of here. Worst president we've ever had. He's the worst president, the most incompetent president. But first, just 10 days from now, we're going to win a monumental victory in the Michigan Republican primary. 10 days. 10 days. And we've won them all by massive records. Every single state we've won. You know that Iowa, New Hampshire, right down the line with Nevada. We won by, we won by uh, records. They've never had votes like that. So something's happening, right? Something's happening. The primary is Tuesday, February 27th, but early voting is available statewide starting today. So you can do that or you can wait a little bit. We're not worried about the primary. What we want to do, we got to win that. Look, get a lot of votes in the primary. We want to send a signal, but we want to win November 5th. November 5th, we're going to get this guy out. We're going to change our country. We're going to bring our country back. Bring our country back from hell. So don't wait. Get out and vote. When we win back the White House, we will have no higher priority than ending the weaponization of this horrible legal system that is developed around us. It's a horrible, horrible thing that's taking place. You talk about democracy. This is a real threat to democracy and restoring fair, equal and impartial justice in America. We have to have that because we don't have that now. The decision yesterday in New York, you may have read about it. Crooked judge, crooked judge. He's a crooked judge. 
by a radical left-wing judge was a lawless and unconstitutional atrocity that sets fire to our laws like no one has ever seen in this country before. That happens in banana republics. It doesn't happen in this country. The case is a complete and total sham. It's a sham case. There were no victims, no defaults, no damages, no complaints, no nothing. There was nothing. The actual bankers who were involved in the loan transactions that were talked about testified at the trial. They said the, that Donald Trump was a highly sought-after whale. They called me a whale. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know if they meant a whale from the standpoint of being a little heavy or a whale because I got a lot of money. But I think they meant the second. But he's a whale of a client. We love him. He's a whale of a client, one of the strongest personal balance sheets that they've ever seen. And he was actually very overqualified for the loan. I didn't even need this loan. Those banks earned more than $100 million in profits doing business with me and my companies. They were very happy, and they testified that way. The expert witness, one of the most respected anywhere in the country, anywhere in the United States, said that my financial statements were the best that he's ever seen. That's not bad. The best that he's ever seen. This was a case of satisfied banks and insurance companies, which made a lot of money dealing with me, and a lot of very happy money and good money. Great financial statements, the best, really great financial statements that didn't even include the most valuable asset, the Trump brand. Ironclad disclaimer. Do you know what a disclaimer is? We have an ironclad disclaimer that's like buyer beware. It means do your own due diligence. Don't believe what you're reading. It's all good, but don't even believe it. Go out and do your own due diligence. You have to go. You have to do that. We had an unbelievable disclaimer and the amazing properties, some of the best all over the world and highly under leveraged. We're very under leveraged as a company. I had very little debt, a lot of cash because we built a great company. And, you know, unlike these other politicians, I knew it would happen. I didn't think it would be this much, but I knew I would lose a billion or two billion dollars if I was honest running for president and being president. And that's what I lost, maybe a couple of billion dollars. And it was the best, it was the best thing I ever did because we've made our country, we made it great. They've blown it, but we're going to make it greater than ever before. We're going to make it greater than ever before. But these other guys, they go in, they have no money. All of a sudden, they're rich. Look at Nancy Pelosi. She's worth like $150 million. The judge, one of the least respected in New York State, said that Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida. Now, you don't really know too much about it, but it's very valuable real estate. Let me put it that way. Was worth $18 million in order to try to make his case. By doing that, he brought the values way down. He tried to make his case when, in actuality, it's worth anywhere from 50 to 100 times that amount. And the appraisers say that. That's not me saying it. The biggest broker in Florida said it. Wait till you hear about the unconstitutional gag order. That's going to be great. The uh, justice, this justice, this judge, he gagged. He doesn't want me to talk. You're not allowed to talk. Because when you hear me talk, you'll say, oh, wow, this is a corrupt system. The case was brought under a consumer fraud statute that has never, ever been used before for this purpose. In fact, a very unfriendly media company, they hate me, said that they studied litigation going back many, many years. And no case, they had, not one case was ever brought like this in the history of New York State. This is the only one. I wonder if they were doing that for political purposes or for election interference. This is merely an election interference ploy by a crazed lunatic attorney general. Did you ever see this attorney general? She's a lunatic working closely with a very bad judge. No jury was allowed. I wasn't allowed a jury. You're not allowed a jury because under this statute, uh, they have the right to do whatever they want to do. It's so unconstitutional. And they refused to send this disgusting charade to the commercial division within the court system where you have, hopefully you'd find a competent judge. And they would have looked at it and it would have never even been brought. The Democrat club controlled judge in Gorin has already been reversed four times on this case alone. It's a record. Never happened before. Every time we went up, he got reversed. And hopefully the whole thing is going to be thrown out and reversed. 
And if justice is anything in New York State, we'll win because New York State's in a lot of problems. The judges and prosecutors that were dealing with me are essentially all the same, different wrappings, tone, manner, but always the same coordinated and overly nasty result. They are nasty. These are Democrats that definitely hate me. They hate you, too, I have to tell you. Whether New York City or state, Fulton County, what do you think of Fawny? What do you think, Fawny? Huh? Huh? F-A-N-I. That's pronounced Fanny, but you're not allowed to say it. It's Fawny. Oh, boy, oh, boy. That's Fulton County. That's Atlanta. Or Washington, D.C. The people couldn't care less about justice. These people, they're not looking for justice. They only care about how to stop crooked Joe Biden's political opponent. That's me. And how to inflict as much pain as possible. But here we are. They've been doing this for seven years, and we won. Excuse me, we won twice, and now we're going to win a third time. We're going to win a third time. And the second time, we did better than we did the first. There's no courtroom decorum or respect. You've got to see these judges. They're screaming. They're like lunatics. There's no respect. There's no decorum, especially for someone that they know hasn't done anything wrong. We haven't done anything wrong. We've done nothing wrong. This last case is we haven't done anything wrong. How about the one two weeks ago? A woman, I'm saying, who the hell is she? Who is the woman? It's so unfair what's happening in our country. Our court system is a mess. What's happening in our country, they have to straighten it out. All you see is bitterness and revenge and hatred. Judge and gore and just find me. $355 million for doing everything right. 355. And these repulsive abuses of power are not just uh, an attack on me. They're really an attack on you and all Americans. It's a disgusting, it's a disgusting thing. I deal with the bank. The bank is happy. There's no victims. There's no anything. $355 million. I paid off a mortgage for a tiny fraction of that amount. I borrowed money, and they wanted me to borrow the money. I didn't even need the money. They want because that's what they do. They loan money, and they like to loan it to good people. So they loan me money, and they, they charge me a fine in New York State. Nobody's going back to New York State. A lot of people are leaving, a lot of businesses. But they fine me $355 million. It's the law. Nothing like this has ever happened. This judge is a lunatic, and if you've ever watched him, and the Attorney General may be worse, may be worse. You ever watch her? I will get Donald Trump, her campaign. I will get Donald Trump, I promise I will get him. She knows nothing about me, nothing about me. She says, I will get him. As a result of this decision, businesses are going to flee New York State, they already are, taking with them tens of thousands of jobs because they can't subject themselves to this. And if this persecution of political opponents continues, no one will want to do business in the United States of America any longer. We will truly become a third world country. We are going to be, we are already in many ways, if you look at our border, we are worse than a third world country because there's never, ever in history been a border like that. Joe Biden and the fascists that control him are a threat to democracy. They're a threat to democracy. Now, he's not smart enough to know that, but he's got people that control. The guy can't even walk off a platform. No, he can't find the stairs. He can't put two sentences together. And I'm not going to imitate him, because every time I imitate him, they say, Donald Trump couldn't find his way off. Now, every time, because they're fake news. That's a lot of fake news back there. A lot of fake news. Now, every time I imitate him, last week I imitated him, and you know the way he goes like this. He finishes a speech that takes about two and a half minutes, because that's when his energy runs out, right? You know, energy. You know, he's got a lot of energy. What happened to that cocaine in the White House? Whatever happened. He's got a lot of energy, this guy. You know, I never spoke about him until they indicted me. And once they indicted me, I can now just speak the way I want to speak. He's a corrupt person. He's a horrible president, the worst we've ever had. The happiest man in our country today is a man named Jimmy Carter. 
because he is considered a brilliant president by comparison. That's true. He's brilliant. Congress ought to impeach crooked Joe Biden for attacking his political opponent by weaponizing the DOJ, FBI, and even local DAs and attorney generals against his opponent, me. They ought to do that. As Byron York, did you ever hear of Byron York, great writer? From the Washington Examiner said, quote, the Justice Department forbids prosecutorial interference with elections. Very simple. The guidelines are very clear. Now, he's just writing the rules. He's a great talent, and he's writing the rules, and he's quoting the rules because nobody knows them. No, not even lawyers seem to know them. Federal prosecutors and agents may never select the timing of any action, including investigative steps, criminal charges, or statements for the purpose of affecting any election or for the purpose of giving an advantage or disadvantage to any candidate or a political party. Now, so they're saying you can't be doing what they're doing to me now because we're in the midst of an election. We just had three beauties and actually four, including the islands. We won them all in landslides. You're not allowed to do what they're doing. You've got South Carolina coming up, Michigan coming up, and then Super Tuesday coming up in two weeks. And they want me so badly, these guys, because you know what? We're beating Biden by we're clobbering this guy. Who the hell wouldn't? We're beating him. Prosecutor deranged Jack Smith is in a very big hurry. I mean, this guy is working so hard. He's a crooked guy. Deranged Jack Smith. He's a prosecutor. They brought him out to try and do damage. But, and he's done a lot of damage to a lot of people. And he's been overturned by the United States Supreme Court unanimously. But he always fails because he goes too far. He's, a, he's an animal. But he's not allowed to say why. But the reason has been obvious all along. He wants Trump to be tried and convicted so that we get hurt for the November 5th day. And he's not going to hurt us because this is turning. My poll numbers today are much higher than they were three months ago because of this. It's our poll, our. It's actually our poll because we're all in this thing together. We're all in this mess together. <laughs> we're going to straighten this country out. We cannot let this injustice stand. And that's why I will fight crooked Joe Biden's weaponized persecution at every step, and we will win. We're going to win. This is going to be the biggest win ever. This is going to be bigger than 2016. Be bigger than 2016. With your support, we're going to rock at the Republican nomination. We are going to get this. We're going to have so many voters out there that whether they cheat or not, it's not going to matter. You know, at a certain, because they only cheat. How the hell do you get elected if you have open borders and high interest rates and you can't buy a car? And if you do buy a car, they want you to buy an electric car, which doesn't go very far. And the United Auto Workers, this guy, Sean Fain, what he, what the contract that he entered in, you know, all those cars are going to be made in China within three years. I hope they know that. The auto workers are all, I think the auto workers, I met a couple of them back. Raise your hand if you're, there is one guy right there. Do you agree with me? He sold you out. Where's, I had a guy, he had the strongest build I've ever seen. I said, I'd love a body like that. Where is that guy? Where is that? Right there's one. These guys are saw you lifting, you know, a lot of stuff. You got to, by nature. And then they go and work out after work. I mean, explain that one. But no, I met a lot of the auto workers backstage and they're great people, but they're being sold out. We're going to bring auto workers back to the country. We're going to have all sorts. You want, you want electric, you want a hybrid. We're bringing everything back. You can have your choice. The problem is electric doesn't go very far, you know? You, you're driving along and you're petrified. Oh my, I, I'm going to front. They say, next charging booth, 93 miles. Go west, 93 miles. The whole thing is crazy. And you know, if we built all the charging booths that are necessary, our country would go bankrupt. You know that, Pete? The country, it would cost like $3 trillion more money. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard. But we're dealing with a lot. He's a very low IQ individual, our president. I would be willing to bet that Joe Biden, of all the presidents, we've had a lot of them, he is the lowest IQ individual of any president ever, 
ever. And he's telling us to get rid of our to get rid of our cars, get they want to make trucks all electric. The problem is they don't go far either. And you'd have to have half of the capacity of the truck would be devoted to a battery. I don't know if you know this. They want to make our army tanks, you know, the beautiful army tanks. They want to make them into all electric. So that it was, as we enter a country to obliterate it, at least we give them nice, clean air, beautiful air, beautiful air to breathe as we obliterate them. Crooked Joe has ordered a hit job on Michigan manufacturing with his insane electric vehicle mandate. Do the auto workers here, of which we have a lot, uh, do you agree with that? There's the guy. Uh, come on up here. Come here. Come here. Come on up. This never works out. You know that, right? That's okay. No, I like this guy. I met him backstage. He's great. He's great. Come on up. Secret Service is thrilled. You know, when we do this uh, secret and you look at the guy, he could rip you apart. Come on up. I like this guy. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come on, man. I love you, Say brother. something. Say something. Take, wait, take that thing off. Come here. <laughs> take that thing off. Look at this guy. Thank you, President Trump. We got your back. The auto workers are going to support this guy like we did in 16, 20. We're going to do it again in 24. Everybody's going to get out and vote. We're going to vote. 85 million of us are going to vote for this guy. They can't cheat enough to beat him. I love you, brother. Okay, we'll take care of you. Keep fighting the fight. That's right. Well, that worked out well. Look. I met him backstage. I liked him. I said, look at these muscles. This guy's got muscles all over the place. I said, what do you do? He said, I'm an auto worker. I said, that's too bad because you're not going to have a job in two years. And he agrees with me, but I want to thank him. And you did a great job. I think he was more effective than I could ever be, actually. Thank you very much. We don't want to see it happen. We want to bring manufacturing back. You know, you've lost already 54 percent over the years, 54 percent of auto manufacturing. And you're going to lose the rest of it very fast, a lot of it coming out of Michigan, a lot of it coming out. So we're going to get it back and we're going to have we're going to have big investments from other companies. And we're we're looking. Look, we're going to put tariffs on cars. I did it with China. I stopped that inflow with China. We took in four hundred and forty four billion dollars from China. No president has ever taken in 10 cents. And you know what? I protected the auto workers by doing that because cars were actually taxed when they come in. And if we don't do that, that's what they do to us. That's what they do to us. So we're going to bring manufacturing back. And look, I get along great. The president of Mexico, great person, great, great person. But what Mexico has done to this, this country in terms of auto, do you realize, do you realize what Mexico has done in terms of the auto workers? A friend of mine builds big plants. He's a big supporter, Bill, big, big auto plants. I said, I'd like to go take a look at some of your plants because I find it very interesting. I want to know exactly what I'm, I like to build and I like to see things like this. He said, good, but we really have to go to Mexico. I said, what do you mean? You build them here, right? Yeah, I do, but the big ones are being built in Mexico. I said, isn't that a shame, right? This is just a guy telling me, you know, he's no, no ax to grind. He said, the big plants, uh, President, he's a friend of mine. He used to call me Donald. Now he calls me President. I said, call me Donald. He said, I'll try. And he said, Donald, the big plants, the big plants, the ones that you really have to see are the ones that we're building in Mexico. They're unbelievable. I said, uh, how much bigger, how much better? He said, far more advanced, double, triple the size of what's happening in the United States. So, President, I said, Donald, President, he couldn't do it. But that's nice that he couldn't. You know what? That's a sign of respect, right? It's a, he couldn't call me by, by whole for 20 years. He called me Donald. He can't call me Donald. I have that with a lot of friends. They used to call me Donny. They used to call me Don, DJ. Now they all call me President. I say, call me, loosen. I say, loosen up. Loosen up. You've been my friend for 25 years. Loosen up. But uh, the big plants are all being built in Mexico. And I'll, I'll give you a worse one. China now is building plants in Mexico and selling the cars to the United States. What the hell does that do for us? They're building plants in Mexico right across the border, and the cars are being sold 
tax-free into the United States. I will stop that the first day. The first day. A vote for Biden is a vote to send tens of thousands of Michigan jobs to China and other places that we don't want them to go. A vote for Trump is a vote to keep those manufacturing jobs in America and add a lot of jobs. We could get, within a very short period of time, just through taxation of people that don't love us, we could get everybody to start moving back here because it wouldn't be economically feasible for them to build in Mexico or China or other places. And it will just take the stroke of a pen, and I can do that very quickly. Biden's ridiculous electric vehicle mandate and his Green New Scam are the all — I mean, these are what they're pushing — the Green New Scam. Nobody even knows what the hell's going on. The Green News Scam, they talk about, you know, they don't want anything built with any form of petroleum product. They want wind. But what happens if the wind doesn't blow? They don't know. You know, it's hard to store wind energy, right? You know that. So they want wind or they want solar. Or they want all things. It's not big enough to fire up your plants. It's not good. It's not consistent. So Germany tried it, and they went bust. And now they're building coal plants all over the place, and they're building nuclear. They closed up all their nuclear, all their coal. Now they're reopening them. It didn't work. They have suffered greatly. Other countries, it hasn't worked. Why do we have to be doing this? It's not going to work. We need to fire up our plants with petroleum if it's necessary. Whatever the hell it takes. Nice, clean, natural gas. Did, did you ever hear of a thing called clean coal? Clean coal, they do them. They do great things with coal, too. And we have more of all of these products than anybody anywhere in the world. I call it liquid gold. We have more liquid gold than any country anywhere in the world, including Saudi Arabia, including Russia. And we don't use it. We're now buying oil from Venezuela. We're not buying oil. We're buying tar. We're buying tar. It's very thick. And you know where we clean the tar? In Houston, Texas. It's the only refinery in the whole country that can clean this tar. And that's what we do. And that goes into the air. And I guess, you know, they'll figure out what happens with it. But it's very sad. China is building a coal plant a week, a big coal plant a week. And then they see, well, they finally fired Kerry. That, he got fired. To me, that was a great thing. He'd go to China. They're building a plant a week. And he'd tell them all of the problems with coal. And they're saying, oh, yes, yes, we agree, we agree. In the meantime, they authorize about 70 new plants for next year. The whole thing. We are like the stupid country, the stupid country. But we will be the stupid country no longer. And we had it going. You know, we built, we built the greatest economy in the history of our country. And we will get it back, and we will do it again. And we're going to close that border, and we're going to drill baby drill, and we're going to do all sorts of things. We had the strongest border. We had the strongest border in the recorded history of our country, by far. We had it down to a level that they'd never seen before. We built 571 miles of wall. We had it down. We were going to build another 200. It was all done. Then the election was rigged, and we couldn't put it up. We had three weeks. It was all there. And all they had to do is put up the slats, put them up. It was all done. 200 miles. Actually built 300 miles more than I said we were going to do. All they had to do is put it up. And they, you know what? They took over, and they didn't put it up. They sold the stuff for five cents on the dollar. Think of it. For five cents, and it's expensive. It's what the Border Patrol wanted. You know, I wanted concrete slabs, and they wanted to have steel, rebar, and concrete, all three. And they were right. You had to have a fence to see through. I said, what the hell do you have to see through? What are we looking at? They wanted a fence. I did everything, the board, even the panel on top. You know, it's called an anti-climb paddle. You know that? Because it makes it very hard for people. Do you ever watch these people with 70 pounds of drugs on their back? They go up. They're unbelievable. They're like athletes. But when you have the paddle, the anti-climb paddle, it's very hard for them to get across. So I put the I gave them everything they wanted. 571 miles we built. And that's why that happened. And that's why we had such good numbers. And then I had another 200 miles that was ready to be in, so it would have been done in three weeks. And these guys said, we don't want to do it. And I said, I said, they want open borders. Nobody believed it. Why would they want open borders? They either hate the country or they're stupid. 
And they're not stupid because anybody that could cheat on elections the way they do is not stupid. So they either hate the country or they're stupid. So we are going to close up the border like we had it. We had the best border ever. You know, I went to Mexico, and you know this, and I got along really great, but I went to, to them. I told them, look, fellas, you got to give us 28,000 soldiers. They looked at me like, what a stupid request. Why the hell would — they're going like, why would we give him 28,000? You know, they're laughing. They think we're like, we're all a bunch of dummies, right? I said, no, no, you have to, because they've taken advantage of it, including taking 32 percent. By the way, 32 percent of what you had here is right now being done in Mexico. That's over the last 20 years, 32 percent. And they'll take the rest of it, too. And remember the story about the plan. But think of this. So I said, no, you have to give us 28,000 soldiers because we're building the wall and we need protection. And you're allowing people to walk through on the caravans. Thousands and thousands of people coming from all over the world. Yesterday, they had many from the Congo. Welcome to the Congo, people, because — and where do you come in the Congo? Where do you live? Uh, we were in prison. What for? Murder. Oh, great. So they're being put — and who can blame? They're coming from Africa. They're coming from Asia. They're coming from different parts of the Middle East. They're coming from Yemen. We're bombing Yemen. You know, here's this idiot is again bombing, bombing. When I came in, they were bombing. I got to stop. You don't have to bomb. Every bomb is a million dollars. You know that. One million. Every time you see a little flash, it's a million. But more importantly, you're killing a lot of people. You don't have to kill the people. We don't want to kill people. We want a solution to things. You would have never had Ukraine and Russia. You would have never had Israel. Israel would have never been attacked. Ukraine would have never been attacked. Putin would have never attacked. In fact, Putin said the other day, no, I prefer Biden as president. I said, I don't know why. I stopped. I stopped Nord Stream 2. It was totally stopped. I stopped Nord Stream 2. Biden came and he approved it, but he stopped the Keystone. So he let Russia build their pipeline to Germany and other places. But he stopped the Keystone, 48,000 jobs. And the head — remember this for the uh, auto workers — the head of the pipeline union endorsed sleepy Joe Biden, endorsed him. Now, he should be out of a job. And all those guys — now, almost every worker voted for me because they're smart, you know. But you have the same thing in the auto workers. Most of the auto workers are going to vote for me. I'm going to bring jobs back. You're going to lose all your jobs. And we're waiting for the Teamsters. And I will tell you, the biggest threat to your unions is millions of people coming across the border, because you're not going to have your jobs anymore. Even that good-looking, strong guy with those beautiful muscles, he's not going to have his job, because they'll have somebody else take it for one-third the price and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You're not going to write — you not — look, he's agreeing. Don't laugh. He's laughing. Don't laugh. I mean, you know, we got to be serious here. The truth is, though, when you have millions of people coming in, they're going to take your jobs. They're going to take the Teamster jobs. You know, we're waiting because the Teamsters haven't endorsed a Republican in many, many years. And they're having a hard time with this. How do they endorse a man who's a low IQ individual? How do they do it? That's — that's Sleepy Joe. How do they endorse — or Crooked Joe? Which is a better name, Crooked Joe Biden or Sleepy Joe Biden? Okay. okay wait. Let's do a free poll. Let's do a free poll. Okay, Hoekstra. Hoekstra, this is a free poll. See, I don't pay for it. You know, these guys go out, they pay a million dollars for a poll. Most of the polls, they don't even go sample. They just give it, they say, send me the check. No, this is a free poll. Who likes, I'll go sleepy first, then I'll go crooked. Who likes sleepy Joe Biden? Who likes crooked Joe Biden? Because I retired the name Crooked from Hillary. You know that, right? I retired the name Crooked because this was one of the best days in our life. I announced I was going to retire because I thought it was more befitting. She didn't matter anymore. I thought it was more befitting for Joe because he's the most corrupt president we've ever had. He's a Manchurian candidate, actually. You know what a Manchurian candidate is? This guy's getting so much money from so many countries that they can't even figure it out. When I came into office, American manufacturing was on its knees, gasping its last breath. Eight long years of Obama and crooked Joe Biden, who backed NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever. 
and China's entry into the World Trade Organization. Great deal, fellas. TPP and every other globalist betrayal of Michigan workers. For 50 years, they were back in all these horrible deals. They were really back in China. Just as I promised, I withdrew from the Trans-Pacific Partnership in my very first week. That saved your auto industry. You wouldn't have an, you don't have much left anyway, but that saved you the 42% that you have left. I ended the disaster known as NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with a brand new USMCA, the best trade deal ever made, they say. And in particular, it was salvation for the American auto industry and the American labor. Now they're going to these all-electric cars, so everything's going to be gone. Everything's going to be gone. So sad. So sad. Nobody wants to buy these cars either. That's the other problem. They don't go far. I want to be more sophisticated. I said, give me a good reason why we shouldn't buy electric. Why, why should we buy it? And the guy goes, well, sir, they don't go far. I said, they don't go far. That sounds so basic. That's like a first grader. They don't go far. I said, that's about as accurate. They don't go far. They also are very expensive, much more expensive, and they require far fewer jobs to make. That means, Michigan, you're going to get so screwed. I can't believe it. I can't believe that that guy was able to convince. You know, I thought he was like a tough guy because he said, we're going to go on strike. We're going to do this. He got on strike. He signed the worst deal. You're, gonna, you're getting nice wages for a short period of time, but you're going to be out of jobs in two years. So just remember it. I also, and you know, they're trying to renegotiate a whole big pile of things. As you know, all of these deals, the USMCA, Mexico and Canada are trying to renegotiate the deal now with Biden. And Biden's looking at them. He has no idea what they're talking about. I have no idea. What is the USMCA? What countries are they? What countries are they? Uh, oh, that's Mexico and Canada. Oh, I have no idea. By the way, isn't this better than being on this frickin' teleprompter, seriously? I can only do this with friends. I can only do it with friends. Oh, it's terrible. But they always criticize me. For instance, sometimes I'll use the name Barack Hussein Obama instead of Biden. I'll say, and your president, Barack Hussein. Remember Rush? He used to shout, Barack Hussein Obama. And I'll say, because he's, a lot of people think he's still the president. A lot of people think he's really running Biden. He's got a lot of his people in there. So I'll say, your president, Barack Hussein Obama. And they'll say the next day, Donald Trump didn't know who the president of our country is. He thought it was Barack. It's true. It's true. It's true with the stairs, too. They're always, I cannot do it anymore. Everyone says, please do the stairs. But every time I do the stairs, I walk to one. I walk to, then I walk into a wall in the back. They say, see? He couldn't find his way off the stage either. These people are so dishonest. They are terrible. But I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be sarcastic anymore because it's too painful. I also renegotiated Obama's Korea trade deal to fully restore the protective tariff on foreign pickup trucks. Now, if I didn't do that, you know, you make more money with pickup trucks than any, any other vehicle. If I didn't do that, right? If I didn't do that, you would be dying here because without the pickup truck, uh, you would have had a problem. And I put the tax on. It was all set to expire, and South Korea was so happy. Everybody was so happy it was going It didn't expire because I extended it, and I got it. And if I didn't do that, you would have had a big problem. You would have had a big problem. I took on communist China like no administration in history bringing in hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our treasury when no other president had gotten 10 cents. You look back, not one other president got 10 cents from China. They all said, oh, China's a developing nation. Well, we're a developing nation, too. Look at our cities. They're falling apart. Look at our country. It's falling apart. We're like a third world nation. Look at our airports. Look at our airports. I mean, how bad are the airports? And as part of my strong trade policies, I kept Chinese cars the hell out of America through taxation. It's very easy. You know, I used to argue with Angela, Angela Merkel. You ever see the hat? Trump was right about everything. I was right, basically. But, but I used to say, Angela, let me a question. It's just, you don't treat us well. You don't take our cars. Oh, we would love to. We would, oh, really? I said, how many Chevrolets do you have in Munich? Uh, probably none. I said, that's right. How many Chevrolets do you have in Germany? Uh, maybe none. That's right. 
But we take their BMWs, we take their Volkswagens, we take their Mercedes Benzes, we take everything. We're stupid. We're so stupid to allow this to happen. They won't take anything having to do with us. And I had them all broken down. Everything was good. We were doing good. And then all of a sudden, you know, we had the COVID hit us. And we did a great job in that. We never got acknowledged for that. But what China did to us with COVID, to the world, $60 trillion of damage and, you know, millions and millions of people killed. But we did a great job, came out of it. When I left, the stock market price was higher than when just before COVID came in, or as I call it, the China virus, because I want to be accurate. I imposed a magnificent 27.5 percent tariff on all Chinese automobiles, and it remains in place to this day. You know why? Biden can't take it off because they make so much money with it. They want to take it off so badly because, you know, they pay him a lot of money. China gives him a lot of money, so he'd like to he'd like to reciprocate. But I just want to say to Michigan, you're welcome, because if I didn't do that, you would have a big problem. Under the Trump administration, you were better off. Your family was better off. Your neighbors were better off. Your communities were better off. And our country was a lot better off. America was stronger, richer, safer, and more confident than ever when you had me sitting behind that beautiful resolute desk. You know what the resolute desk? Beautiful. In the Oval Office. You know, we have, as a president, when you get elected, they give you a choice of seven desks. You have seven desks. They're all beautiful. They all represent something different. But Resolute uh, represented Ronald Reagan, represented some people that I respected, liked. I also think it's beautiful. But we got to get back behind that Resolute desk. We have to get back. We have to get back. Stop. Stop these fascists from taking over. They're destroying our country, by the way, in case you haven't noticed. In case you haven't noticed, they are destroying our country. By contrast, Joe Biden spent his entire career hurting your family while your family, his family raked in millions and millions of dollars, and he was making bad deals for our country. He was, the guy has a lot of houses all over the place. I mean, the guy, they start off with nothing, then they're worth millions and millions of dollars. The most they ever made was $179,000, and yet they have houses that are worth millions and millions, you know, the beach cottage and the this one and the that one, ocean, the nice waves, the nice garage with the, with the Corvette, right? The Corvette. And the documents under the Corvette. And he's, you know, the Corvette sitting on classified documents. And it's okay for him, but for me, when you have it sealed at Mar-a-Lago, that's no good. You know, no, no. Uh, it's a terrible double standard. How about that? Did you see that? And he's also got documents in Chinatown. He's got documents at Penn. They're falling out of boxes. Those boxes are heavily used, too. Those documents are going in and out. But how about the boxes in Chinatown? Chinatown! And he gets paid by China. The whole thing, we have such a double standard, it's a disgrace. Just this week, House investigators revealed that Crooked Joe showed up at a business meeting hosted by the Chinese Communist Party, controlled energy companies and all of this, and they were paying his son a lot of money. She, I'm surprised to hear that. Crooked Joe gave a 10-minute presentation, and days later, Hunter's company got a $3 million check out of China. Crooked Joe is not working for you. He's working for himself because he gets a piece. Uh, don't they have a little statement about him? You know, he gets a nice chunk out of everything. As President Harry Truman said, show me a man that gets rich by being a politician, and I will show you a crook. True. That's true. That's true. Hey, by the way, it's nice in this. You know, I thought it was going to be like freezing in here, Pete. It's very nice. It's beautiful. Is everybody having a good time talking about this horror show? Huh? Is there any place better than being at a Trump rally? Yeah, I'll tell you, the people outside, they can't get in. They're not so thrilled about that. Uh, thank you very much. Look at that. I mean, this place is packed. This set a new record. You're not supposed to have this many people. This place is packed. Thank you. Thank you. I love you too. I love you too. 
or I wouldn't be doing this. I had a nice life, you know? I had a nice life. I had nice places. I had a great company. I had everything. And now, look, I go through this crap because, you know what? We made America great again. We're going to make it greater than ever before. We're going to take it back. It's the question I get asked most often. They say, sir, how do you do it? I've been asked by the toughest guys, the toughest Wall Street guys. You think they're tough, but they're really not. They're not as tough as the auto workers, I'll tell you right now. But they think they are. They think they're tough. But a lot of them come to me and they'll say, how do you do it? You go through all these subpoenas. You got indicted. Now, in my whole life, I didn't know what the word, I didn't know what indictment meant. You got indicted more than Alphonse Capone, Scarface. They say, how do you take it? How do you do it? I say, it doesn't bother me. It's like I'm just doing something for some incredible people. It's called the American people. It's called I'm doing something for America. It doesn't bother me. And, you know, when you see the love in this room and when you see the polls, I mean, maybe I'd feel differently if I was losing by a lot or a little. But, you know, we're leading Biden by so much. We're, we're beating him by so much. We have a competitor, a bird brain, who is getting decimated by him. But we're leading by so much, and that means there's love. That means what we're doing is just sort of, I just feel very good about it. I mean, you know, maybe I'm wired a little bit differently. I don't know. I don't know. But I feel good about it. Biden always puts America last. He didn't even have the decency to go to East Palestine, Ohio, until yesterday. He would have been better off not going. The mayor is a great guy. I went there very early. The mayor is a great guy. The people are great people. They're unbelievable people. The guy goes like a year later. And, you know, you talk about pandering. That's, I think, the ultimate pandering. He would have been a lot better. Whoever advised him, the same person that advises him to go to beaches. You're like, go to the beach. You look great in a bathing suit. If he would have gone to the beach and left the border alone, we had Tom Holman. We had the best people, Brandon Judd. We had that border, the best it's ever been. If he would have left it alone, we wouldn't have I think the number is going to be 18 million people by the time this nightmare ends. I think it's 18 million people. Think of it. But I went to East Palestine, and I was there and met the people, and they loved me, and I loved them. But I put workers first, and I put America first. Nobody else does that. Not too many. If Crooked Joe gets four more years, our country is done. It's done. It's done. I mean, we got to get out and vote. we got to vote like that. And that includes in the primary. I mean, you don't have much of a primary here. I think we have a 60-point lead, 70-point lead. But you know what? It's important to send the Democrats a message. we got to send them a message for November. we got to get out and vote. You go next week, you vote, because we have to put out the message. We have to get out. We have to let them know that a freight train is coming in November. Biden's plan calls for raising taxes by over $6 trillion. Congratulations, everybody. I gave you the largest tax cut in the history of our country. And by the way, we took in much more revenue because of that. But he wants to raise your taxes by quadruple, a tax hike that would be the biggest tax hike in the history of our country. That's what he wants to do. I will make the Trump tax cuts permanent. He wants to end them that the biggest — I gave you the biggest tax cuts in the history of our country. I gave you the biggest regulation cuts in the history. That's why you had the biggest job numbers we've ever had. I'll also pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. You know what that is? When a country charges us a tax, we say, oh, what is it, 100 percent good? We're charging them the same tax, okay? Reciprocal. It's reciprocal. So if China's charging us a $100 tariff, we charge them a $100 tariff. It's quite simple, actually. It's basically saying, you screw us and we screw you. And you know what's going to end? You know what's going to end up? They'll drop it. Everybody drops it. You know, let's forget the bookkeeping, right? But, uh, no, we were treated very unfairly by virtually every country. We did so much. I renegotiated the deals with South Korea. I renegotiated the deals with Japan. I made them so much better with Abe, who was an incredible guy. He was assassinated. But Shinzo Abe was an incredible guy, one of my really good friends. He was great. But I came to him, I remember, because Japan took such advantage of us. And I came to him. I said, Shinzo, 
it's not working. It's so unfair. I mean, it's so one-sided. He goes, I know. I was waiting for you to come see me. I said, didn't anybody else? He said, nobody ever came to see us. I can't believe we got away with it for so many years. They expect it. And we renegotiated the deal. It didn't take that long. We got a, we got a great deal out of it. And as tariffs on foreign countries go up, taxes on American workers and families will come down. They'll come down very dramatically. It will almost solve our budget deficit. So the Reciprocal Trade Act, let's say it's 10 percent, let's say it's 15 percent. This will go a long way. All these countries, they want to do business in the United States. It's an honor to do business in there. We have to bring that back. For them to come in and take advantage of our country, it's an honor. You should have to pay for that. For them to come in and take our jobs and take our money and take everything out of our country, the guts out of our country, for them to manufacture cars and send them in so that we don't manufacture cars. So the Reciprocal Trade Act, it's very simple. They got to pay. So if they pay 10 percent or 15, I don't believe it's going to affect the business that much. But it's so much money that would be coming into our country that it will largely knock out deficits to a large extent. The deficit will be wiped out overnight. And I think they'll be doing — I think they'll be doing almost the same business. The only difference is that they won't make quite as much money, because right now they're making so much money. In the case of China, they've rebuilt military to rival our military with the kind of money — $500 billion a year — that they take out. So we don't want that to happen. The only ones who hate it are the globalists, because basically they hate America. Globalists, I think, really believe — I really believe it. And that's a plenty of Republicans, although it seems to be a dying breed within the Republican, because Republican is mostly MAGA. MAGA. Make America great again. Globalists. Globalists. Now, the globalists, I think they're, they're on respirators. They're, they're a dying breed, I think. I hope. They are not — they are not good for our country. It's no wonder Joe Biden and his thugs are so desperate to stop us. They know that we are the only ones who can stop them. They know that. You know, we did it in 2016. Remember that beautiful night in 2016 where they had Florida locked? It was going to be — and then all of a sudden, at about 9.01, Donald Trump has won the state of Florida. Ooh, that was bad. And they go up the call thing, then they go, Donald Trump. Then we win Alabama, we win this. We're, Donald Trump has won the state of Georgia by a lot. We did — I think we did much better the second time with Georgia, by the way. But Donald Trump has won the state of Georgia. Donald Trump has won the state of South Carolina by a lot. Donald Trump has won the state of North Carolina. We ran that coast up and far — and they kept saying, oh, they said, you know, with North Carolina, they said, don't worry about it. That's our fire stop. That's our — he can't win that one. And then they go — this was a whole big thing for an hour. They were saying, the stop is North Carolina. They get — Donald Trump has won the state. And they like having heart attacks. Oh, those people. Remember the crazy woman in the convention center with the hair and the glasses and the bonnet? And she's screaming, that poor woman. Ay, ay, ay. And she's screaming. You know what she's screaming for? She wants continued failure in our country. All of their attacks and all of these corrupt persecutions that they're doing are only happening because I am running for president and leading big in the polls and won a presidential race that we weren't supposed to win. You know, they all said, it's funny, I came here and I came to four or five other states in the last couple of days, and we were having rallies, 45, 50,000 people. And then I'd leave, and I kept hearing how we were going to lose. And I kept, how come we're going to lose? With Hillary, she'd come, she'd have like 300 people show up. With Joe, he'd come, he couldn't fill the circle. You know? Remember the eight circles? Good contractor. Those circles were beautiful. I want to find out who is the contract. They were beautiful circles. But they had eight circles, and they had to put the fake news in those circles because they couldn't fill them up. And then I'd have 48, 50,000 people at these rallies, and I'd say, how the hell — why are we going to lose? And we ended up winning Michigan. Remember, that was a beautiful — that was a beautiful — And Wisconsin. We won Wisconsin. We won Pennsylvania. We won it all. In the latest morning console poll — oh, and we're doing much better now than we ever did, actually. As you know, we did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016. We got millions and millions of more votes, Pete, 
millions and millions of more votes. We got votes like nobody thought possible, but the election was rigged. It's just one of those things. But we're not going to let them rig it this time, that I can tell you. In the latest morning console poll, we're at 80 percent in the Republican Party and in the new 80 percent. And in the new Fox poll, which <laughs> tends to be not so such a good poll, we're beating Biden substantially here in Michigan, like by a lot. And we're winning a historic 25 percent of the African-American vote in this state. Nice. Nice. By the way, the biggest change, we're doing phenomenally with the African-American voters. Remember, criminal justice reform, helping their colleges and universities out like nobody ever did before. That was a big thing. All of the things we did, opportunity zones with Tim Scott, Tim Scott had this incredible idea for opportunity. It's one of the best economic development programs ever in the history of our country. Nobody talks about it. But we did a lot, and the African-American population understands it. The black population understands it. And with Hispanic, the same thing. We're doing numbers that are 30, 40, 50 percent higher than they ever heard of before. We're winning places along the border that no Republicans ever won before. We're like a new party in a lot of ways. So we're getting the workers, we're getting the manufacturers, we're getting the guys that make the product. We're getting guys like my friend with the big muscles over there. We have a lot of auto workers. You know, we have a lot of auto workers in this room who are disgusted with the fact because they're smart. Look at that guy. He's another guy. Look at him. You can build my car any day. You can. <laughs> you can build my car any day. And these are great people. These are great workers. These are talented, very talented people. This isn't just workers. These are very talented, brilliant people. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I am being indicted for you. Never forget. I'm being indicted for you. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. I will not do that. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. And I just happen to be standing in their way. That's what's happening. They're after you. We are pleased to be joined tonight by some incredible people that represent your state so well, including members of Congress. Lisa McLean, where's Lisa? What a great woman. She's tough, don't mess around with her. She's a tough one, and she's great. Thank you, Lisa. You really are, you're doing a fantastic, you're a warrior. And Jack Bergman, Jack, thank you very much. What a job, two real good ones. Your new Michigan Republican Party chairman, former congressman, Pete Hoekstra. I actually recommended. I said, you think you could ever get this guy Hoekstra? He's unbelievable. And you were willing to do it. And I appreciate it. Everybody appreciates it. We're going to win the state. If we win Michigan, we win the election. You know? Thank you, Pete. Great. Got the best man. I said that. I said, can you get Hoekstra? He was incredible. Everything he did in Congress, he was incredible. And then he was an unbelievable ambassador. He, everybody thought he was just about the best. And then uh, I just said, you got to get that guy. And he agreed to do it. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. State House Minority Leader Matt Hall. Matt. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Great job. Former Michigan Supreme Court Justice Stephen Markman. Stephen, thank you. You're here someplace. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. And President of the Police Officers Association of Michigan, James Tiganelli. And a board member, Dwight Zaringer. Thank you, Dwight. Thank you very much. What a great job they do. Law enforcement. We're going to take care of law enforcement. You know, we have the endorsement of almost every single law enforcement group in the country. And anybody that has it endorsed, people look at them and say, what the hell's wrong with you? But we've got the endorsement of just about every law enforcement, the sheriffs, everybody all over the country. From the very first day that we take back the White House from crooked Joe Biden, 
I believe we're going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. We are so ready to go. In our first term, we appointed over 300 federal judges and three Supreme Court justices, great people. We fully rebuilt the U.S. military and created Space Force, first time in 78 years. Last one was Air Force. This was Space Force, and it's a big deal. And for our great veterans, we passed VA accountability and VA choice. Nobody could do it. They worked in them for 54 and for 56 years. We had the most secure border in U.S. history. We ended catch and release and built 561 miles. Think of it. We built this massive thing, and then they go and they just let everybody pour into our country. People weren't even trying to get in anymore. They knew they couldn't get in. And then they come in, and they just come in in numbers that nobody's ever seen before. Nobody's ever seen a border like that. I, I just don't know. Who could, who could think it's a good thing? And remember, they're coming in from prisons. They're coming in from mental institutions, insane asylums. These are, these are people that we're not wanting in our country. The invasion of our country will affect our black population, Hispanic population, union population, and basically people with good, high-paying jobs, more than any others. Union wages will be cut in half or more. And this, these are the people that Biden's allowing to come in. Whether they have the talent or they don't have the talent, they're not going to have the talent of the people right now, but they're going to work for one-third the price. And uh, you're going to have a lot of unhappy union workers, that I can tell you. That includes the United Auto Workers and the Teamsters, black and Hispanic workers, or basically anybody who has a high-paying, good job, will be losing their jobs by the millions. These people are going to work for nothing. They're going to work for very small amounts of money. You're going to lose your jobs. It's so sad. No, it's so sad to see. It's common sense. You got 18 million people by the end of his term coming in. And they're going to be working. They're going to be taking the jobs of people that have lived here for a whole life, pay a lot of tax. They work hard, big talent. Biden's already giving work permits to two and a half million illegal aliens. I don't know if you know that. They don't cover it. We have a new category of crime in our country. It's called migrant crime, and it's taking over America. You know, in New York, what's happening with crime is it's through the roof. And it's called migrant. I call it a new category. I just came up with that name, but I think it's appropriate. It's a new category of crime where they go and they beat up police officers. You've seen that. They go and they stab people, hurt people, shoot people. It's a whole new form. And they have gangs now that are making our games look like small potatoes. Okay? Because Joe Biden allowed this to happen. We will call it from now on Biden migrant crime. Okay? It's migrant crime. This is, we'll call it, I got it, migrant. Let's call it migrant. Biden crime. Bi oh, that's good. That's smart. Migrant crime. No, but you do. You have a category of crime that we've never had. We've never had anything like this before. They're taking over the, the inner cities of our country by the thousands and thousands. They're coming into cities that can't handle it. Even here in Oakland County, you're being overrun. And I will tell you, one man said, what are we going to do about it? We're going to have the largest deportation effort in the history of our country. We have no choice. We have no choice. We have no choice. It's a terrible thing. And we're going to start with the really bad ones first. And, you know, the local police, they know who the bad ones are. They know. They knew. And we're going to take care of our local police. Your sheriff has recently stated that organized criminal squads of illegal alien gang members are hiding in the trees and breaking into rural and suburban Michigan into your homes after dark plundering them for jewelry, purses, electronics, cash, watches, and anything else they can get their hands on. That's what's happening in Michigan. It happened to that guy. Look, he's raising his hand. It happened to him. If you don't want to have illegal alien criminals crawling through your windows and going through your drawers, as the expression goes, then vote against crooked Joe Biden. Throw him the hell out of office. Before I even arrive, you got to. Look, look, if we have this regime, it's like a regime. And believe me, they are bad for democracy. What they're doing with elections, what they're doing with what they're doing in Washington, D.C., with people putting them in jail for 
years and years and years, and they let Antifa get away with murder. It's just a horrible thing. It's a very bad thing, and it's a very dangerous thing. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, we win. We are going to win, not me. We. I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. That war would have never happened if I were president. It was just reported that Biden believes that he did a fantastic job in this catastrophic withdrawal. Do you believe that? The withdrawal, the withdrawal from Afghanistan was the most embarrassing moment, I believe, in the history of our country. If that success, and he thinks it was fine, it was we lost 13 soldiers. We shouldn't have lost anybody. You know, I'm the one that set it up in the sense that we had to get at 21, 20 years. But we had nobody shot at. We had nobody killed under my administration. They were killing our soldiers very much with, with the Obama-Biden mess. They were killing our soldiers. And I called up and I said, get him on the phone, Abdul. He was the leader of the Taliban. I said, Abdul, you're killing our soldiers. Don't kill our soldiers anymore, Abdul. It was not a nice conversation. Then I said, uh, I said, if it happens again, we're going to hit you so hard, you're not even going to believe it. And he goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, uh, Your Excellency. He called me Your Excellency. Actually, he had a very nice way of speaking. He's still leading the Taliban, but now he's got $85 billion worth of our equipment, which he's selling a lot of. You know, they're the second or third largest seller of military equipment in the world now. They took 85 billion. We left 85 billion dollars, 13 soldiers dead. Many of these soldiers, no arms, no legs, obliterated. Many, 38 of them, at least 38 of them. Nobody ever mentions them. We have people that we left behind, too. We have American citizens that we left behind. But that gave Putin the power to go in because he saw the incompetence of our withdrawal from Afghanistan. We were going to get out, but we should have kept Bagram. It's one of the biggest air bases in the world. We built it many years ago, many, many years ago. It cost billions and billions of dollars, one hour away from where China makes their nuclear weapons. And you know who's occupying it right now? China is occupying it right now. Under the Trump administration, we will restore peace through strength. That's what we had. That's what we had. Don't forget, I didn't have any wars. I defeated ISIS 100 percent. It was supposed to take it was supposed to take four years. It took four weeks, four weeks. All right. General Raisin Cane, right? Raisin Cane. But we defeated them very quickly. We will bring back law and order to our country. I will direct a completely overhaul DOJ to investigate every radical out of control prosecutor in America for their illegal racist in reverse enforcement of the law how is how is fawny doing in uh how is how is she doing in fulton county atlanta how's that how's that trial no i paid him cash i paid him cash i didn't take i didn't take anything i paid him cash oh where did you get the cash they're not allowed to answer that question they're not allowed to ask i paid him cash she said i gave him cash oh i didn't take anything no no every time we went on a trip Took nine trips in one year. That's a lot of trips. I haven't taken a trip. I don't think I've taken a trip for about 30 years, actually. I don't take too many trips. But it's like, I think she said nine trips. Every time I took a trip with my lover, I paid, I paid him in cash. Where the hell did you get the cash? You know, what a lot of, what a lot of bullshit. And they hurt a lot of people. She wanted to indict U.S. senators. You know, they stopped at like 40 people. But a lot of good people have been really devastated by the incompetence of that whole thing. And Georgia's been so badly hurt as a state. You know, it's been an embarrassment for Georgia. But when you watch that trial, it's so sad. I paid him in cash. I gave him cash every single trip I took. A lot of trips, uh, beautiful trips, Norwegian cruise lines, beautiful trips. It's so nice. Love is such a beautiful thing. Isn't love a beautiful Love is such a beautiful thing. I'm also going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left people in office that want them to be hurt, that don't want them to look for crime and stop crime. They can stop crime so fast, but they're told not to. 
They're told to stand away as people walk out with television sets out of department stores that end up going out of business. And we're going to protect those officers and those precincts, and in some cases, the states. Because you can stop that whole phenomena where they walk into a 300 guys run into a department store and they loot it. And it's like literally there's not a thing on the shelves. They take millions and millions of dollars out and inevitably they close the stores. They're closing stores all over the country. You can stop that in one day, in one hour, if you got really nasty and really tough. Once they see things happening that they never thought were going to happen to them, and I mean tough, It'll all stop overnight. There won't be any more. And your police would love to be the ones that do it, but they're not allowed. They don't want to lose their homes and their families. They don't want to lose their pensions. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they've ever been before. We'll have to work with Democrats because every single one of our rotten cities are being run by the Democrats. So we'll work with the Democrats if we have to. I think that's okay. We'll be bipartisan for a change. We will take over the horribly run capital of our nation, Washington, D.C., and clean it up, renovate it, and rebuild our capital city so that it's no longer a nightmare of murder and crime. Two people killed over the last couple of days. People are being killed every week. People are being killed. They go from Michigan. They want to see, oh, let's go see the Jefferson Memorial. They want to change the name, you know, because of different things. They want to change the name. They want to change the name of Washington off everything. They want — when you get down to George Washington can no longer be on high schools where they're taking the name George Washington, then we better put on the brakes in this country because we're going to have a lot of big problems. But rather, it will become the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. I drive through. You don't have to go to court in Washington because it's all Biden people that do this. This is all election interference. And in Washington, you know, you have uh, very liberal courts and you have very liberal everything. So they get you in areas where, in theory, you can't win. But it's easier when you've done absolutely nothing wrong. But that doesn't matter because all you have to do is look at Ngoran. In theory, you can't win. But I happened to go to court the other day and I'm driving through Washington. I say, man, this is going down so fast. Tents all over the place. The worst is the roads. They're in such bad condition. The medians are in such bad, you know, the railings, such bad. They, they warp. They're the worst garbage. I don't know who the hell is out. They've been selling them for 30 years. They're such garbage. But they're falling down into the road. The roads are bad. There are potholes all over the place. And I'm saying to myself, can you imagine foreign dignitaries, foreign leaders coming into this country, and they go into Washington, D.C., and they see roads where there's, you're driving over garbage that's been there for three months been there for a long time. Been there for a long time. We have some really bad people in our country that are doing a terrible job. We're going to change Washington, D.C. We're going to make it the safest place anywhere that you can be, anywhere. A man who worked for me, who was fantastic, a young man that worked for me, was shot the other night in his head. A carjacking, a carjacking. They shot him. They said, uh, we want your car, and they shot him in front of his wife, and he died. He died a week ago. What a sad thing. We're not going to have that in Washington, D.C. We're going to run it properly, not run by these people that are, are just horrible. They're just horrible. It's so dangerous. You can't go to Washington, D.C. to go in a park anymore because you're going to be mugged or shot. We're going to change it. We're going to bring it back. We're going to beautify it. We're going to take very strong measures on crime because we can't let that happen. The great capital, Washington, D.C., is under siege. I will always defend Medicare and Social Security, unlike bird brain and unlike, frankly, a lot of other people. Remember that, though, because they're not going to defend it. You know, Nikki Haley, have you ever heard of her? You don't hear her name too much anymore. But she wants to extend the minimum age of Social Security by 10 years. So supposing you're just about ready to get your Social Security, and they say, darling, I have a little bad news. Nikki Haley just extended it by 10 years. I don't think you're going to be too happy. You know, we have such great wealth in this country. We don't have to play around with Social Security and Medicare. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school. Remember this, any school pushing critical race theory, it's so bad. It's so bad transgender insanity or any other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the heads of our children. 
I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And maybe the easiest thing of all, it's embarrassing to have to say it because I don't think 10 years ago anybody ever heard of it. I will keep men out of women's sports. So, right? The weightlifting. The weightlifting. A record was set the other day in weightlifting that will never be broken by a woman, I can tell you. I will fully uphold our totally under siege Second Amendment as I did for four years. We will protect innocent life and we will restore free speech and I will secure our elections where the goal will be one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. One day voting. And you can do that for 9% of the cost. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, you can do the paper ballots and they, you know, paper, it sounds a little crazy, but paper that's called watermark, they have such secure paper now. They, it's, it's actually a very complex instrument, but the paper today is incredible. And you can do paper ballots, same day voting. Think of it. You can do, and voter ID, it costs you 9% of what this other stuff that they do is. They have all this stuff and they say, we should be able to know the final count in two weeks from now. You ever see where they need two weeks to count with the paper ballots? You know, France did it because they couldn't do mail-in ballots because they turned out to be totally corrupt. Mail-in voting is totally corrupt. Get that through your head. It has to be. The votes, I mean, it has to be. And in France, they did mail-in voting and they gave it up because it was so corrupt. They went to paper ballots, same day voting, voter ID, they had 36 million votes. By 10 o'clock in the evening, everything was done. They had a winner, Macron. They had a loser, went home, and they started working the next day. There was no complaints, and there was no problems, and there was no anything going through the air. There was nothing. They had same-day voting and voter ID. They want paper, paper, highly sophisticated paper. Nine percent. You'll save a fortune, 9 percent, and you'll have your answer by 10 o'clock in the evening. But until then, Republicans must win. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden, Crooked Joe, and the Biden administration have done. If you want to save America, then you must vote. You must go and vote. Remember, the primary is Tuesday, February 27th. We need you to get out and vote to set the stage for November. Go vote. November 27th. So remember this. It is a date that's very important. It's November 5th, November 5th. That's a very important date. Everything in our lives should be aimed to that date. Because that's the date we're going to make our country great again. Because right now, we're a laughing stock all over the world. So in two weeks, get out and vote. You watch, uh, watch South Carolina, how we're doing there. We're doing great. We're up about 30 or 35 points on, on a governor who was not really very popular. And in conclusion, from Marquette to Midland, from Grand Rapids to Detroit, we got to watch Detroit. We got to watch Detroit. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. They had such horrible abuse. You know, they had more ballots. Do you know this? They had more ballots than they had voters. Do you know that? Gee. And they didn't want to, you know, go into that. And from Warren to Waterford Township. Waterford Township, beautiful. We stand on the shoulders of red-blooded Michigan patriots who laid the railroads, worked the factories, Tilled the fields, forged the steel, fought the battles, and won the victories that built the Motor City and made America into the greatest and most powerful nation anywhere in the world. But now, but now we are a nation in decline. Very sad. We're a nation in decline. We're a failing nation. We're a nation that has lost its confidence, willpower, and strength. We're a nation that has lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror 
to continue. We're not going to allow it. And remember, Michigan, if we win Michigan, we win the whole ball game. We win everything. Remember that. Nothing they'll be able to do. Don't let them cheat. Don't let them cheat. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. It was hardworking patriots like you. You are patriots. I mean, here it is. You're freezing your ass off, right? And we're here. But it's warm because there's love in this room, right? There's love. Hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it's hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. We have no choice. 2024 is our final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. They truly do. They hate our country. We will rout the fake news media. We will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House on November 5th, 2024. Please remember that day. That's our day. The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. We are one movement. You know, we're the greatest movement in the history of our country. Make America great again. When Biden says, oh, we have to stop MAGA, MAGA, I'd like to say, do you know what MAGA stands for? He would have no idea. MAGA, I don't know. That's not a fair question. And then the anchors would protect him. You shouldn't ask him a question like that. No, no. I'd say, do you know what MAGA stands for? No, please tell me. Make America great again. That's what it says. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much, Michigan. Thank you. Get out and vote. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you, everybody.